All right, well, welcome to lab four, which I titled Bufferosis, because we're going to be learning about buffers this week, uh, or it's part two of acidosis. So again, we're in the state of perpetual acidosis, and really my goal for this class is to try to help you all become healthier in many different ways. And the subtitle is your pH is much, much more than what you eat. But we had to do part one of the lab first because we do need to clean up our some of our diet habits first to be able to venture into the next part of this lab. This picture is a mandala that was drawn by a young lady in Nepal that I've known for uh, many years. And she sent it to me this week and I just wanted to include this in here. Uh, and so part of this lab, you could end up doing one of these also for part of the lab. All right. This could also be the title of the lab. All that matters is right meow. This is my real goal for this lab, is that by the end of seven days that we're, you all are coming to Zoom with your cameras on, fully present in the meow. Calm, cameras on. And giggling until you jiggle and wiggle. All right, so metabolic acidosis, blah, blah, blah. Somebody else can teach you all that. Really, it comes down to this picture. Acidic blood does not mean a pH of five. It means our, our the blood the range of our blood is 7.2 to 7.45, and acidic is below 7.35. So 7.3 is the acidic blood. 7.4 is the alkaline. A really small difference in pH, and it comes from crap versus the rainbow. Simple enough. All right, so hopefully you're finishing up your seven day challenge, whether it was doing the vegan challenge or the no sugar challenge, and hopefully you're inspired to continue doing it. Um, several students last year did, they continued it for the full term, um, that you may have added something healthy as well as doing that. And you can still jump on the bandwagon, just talk to me. All right, this is a picture um, guy from National Geographic who's traveled around the world for over two decades and taken um, pictures. He goes and buys a week's worth of food for the family and takes a picture of them. And this goes perfect with what we talked about. Which one, which family has the highest pH? Really wonderful multiple choice. Which family is also giggling and jiggling and wiggling? It all goes hand in hand. Um, so ROS stands for radical oxygen species or reactive oxygen species. So oxygen, the air we breathe, um, creates free radicals. So we're going to get to antioxidants, oxidation reduction. Antioxidant, antioxidants uh, fill in those missing electrons. So something we've been doing this week, we talked about it as pH. So oxidative stress is the bacon, highly processed food. Antioxidants are loaded in the berries. That's what I do every morning before our class in the summer is I go for a bike ride and I pick blackberries and then I come home and make a smoothie. So acidosis, free radicals, alkalosis, the antioxidants. By the way, that word dis-ease at the bottom, in case you've never heard it said correctly, it is dis-ease ponder that. All right, so I got to thinking, this is from the Oz Museum, and before my glory days at Mount Hood Community College, I always have talked with the fairies that's down in the Redwoods. Um, I was a Nittany Lion at Penn State, and what I did there was, I can get to the next slide, well, I was a mutant, and so you can decide what mutant you are. We're all mutants. Um, I love this word mutation because we put this negative connotation on it, and it could have a beautiful positive one, but it means our DNA sequence, it's not an error, it's something's different, but there are things that can cause it to be different or too different. So smoking, x-rays, right? Uh, certain chemicals, the Mad Hatter is mercury or silver or lead, so the heavy metals. Um, 
viruses, sunlight can all cause damage to our DNA so it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And of course, crappy food, your choice, Chick-fil-A or Twinkies. Um, and probably the two biggest causes, which are really overlooked, that is not the dandelion and the allergen, but the air that we breathe, the oxygen, as well as our attitude. All right. So I got to thinking, so mutations, the change in DNA causes all these things, um, not just damage the DNA, but all those things also cause damage to our cell membrane. Our hearts become not effective, right? We don't, we don't want a heart that looks like that that's covered with fat. We want the nice pink, beautiful heart. Also our liver. And if you don't know, um, the rate of liver disease has skyrocketed in the past two years, year and a half with this whole isolation, fear mentality. And it's because not just the people have turned to alcohol, it's also they've done turned to sugary drinks and drinking cola, sodas, turns your liver to an alcoholic liver. And our body though can repair itself. Cataracts, uh, that lady uh, smoking anything, vaping, you're gonna age really fast. And of course, interferes with our immune system. Common cold, you all know, it's called Corona. Uh, pain and cancer. Cancer is a cell that's out of control. It's misunderstood. I've been there. I've done that. I can tell you, you change your attitude, cells go back to normal. And yeah, if you want to keep eating the crap, that's what happens to your kidneys. All right. So the acidic blood, again, pH below 7.35. You're still functioning. You can see the immune cells are not. There's fungus in your blood, and that's a cancer cell. Birth cells, they're out of control. So the choice is yours. You want to eat crap? You want to eat broccoli? So I got to thinking, like that kid, these studies are now just all over the place that they are showing, and it has to do with that we're able to analyze DNA like we could not do even five years ago. Uh, and it's not, so our DNA, in case you don't know, our human DNA, only 2% of it codes for proteins. We're very unique in this way. So 98% is a beautiful vibration. It's playing a symphony to you. But the other key is our DNA, because there's so much of it, 3 billion base pairs, it has to be compacted into every cell. And so it has to wrap around and it wraps around these things called histones and that allows it to um, be regulated. So acetylated two carbon group, right? So like acetic acid is two carbons. Acetylation is our two carbon group attaching there. Methylation, phosphorylation. So somehow the DNA gets either quieted or expressed. But again, the real big point is 98% of it is doing something else. This is why you want to, this is part of why we're doing this lab. So that was looking at, at broccoli. So broccoli is part of the cruciferous vegetables um, that hopefully you're eating more of uh, and, or it could be part of your challenge this week. Um, so part of how broccoli works, since I'm a chemist, is broccoli or cabbage, purple cabbage, right? That you're all doing the pH lab with. It has the glucose in, in it, this molecule. And then when you chew, sorry, um, anyway, the molecule sulforaphane, the last one that we get to, when it gets broken down, um, it actually makes sulforaphane, which uh, turns off 63 genes in cancer cells and actually suppresses, it act activates the normal tumor suppressor genes. And so I call it a guardian of the genome. And the chewing, is because when you chew, it releases the enzyme there. And that enzyme is what breaks the original molecule into the two final molecule, into that sulforaphane molecule. And it's the sulforaphane that does all this wonderful stuff. Now, the thing that is key is you have to chew your food so it does this reaction so you get that. Or you have to cut it and then wait. Only like 15, 20 minutes. Um, because when you cook this, enzyme gets deactivated. And so once the food is cooked, the molecule is still there, but the enzyme is not. So you need to cut your food and then wait 15, 20 minutes before you cook it. Or 
you have to eat a green leafy salad that is raw at the same time that you eat that meal so that the kale or the cabbage has this enzyme so it will help the broccoli that's been cooked or mustard seed actually has the enzyme in it. So curries are made with that. So chew your food and remember you are what you eat. So smiles are important. So we did this last week and you should continue doing it for your whole lifetime. Um, let's eat alkaline. Let's eat so our food make us alkaline. So again, my background is in DNA. I am obsessed and fascinated. I went through a, a phase over the past couple of years because I'm disturbed by people's obsession with the 2% of the DNA. My obsession is with the rest of it, the 98%, the quantum part. But there is something else that's really cool. And the ends of our DNA are called telomeres. So that's what the bright green is. And these are repetitive sequences that don't code for protein. And every time our cells replicate, our DNA has to replicate. And in that process, you lose a little bit of the ends. And eventually, the telomeres are gone and the DNA unravels itself. It can't work and the cell dies, you die. And so somebody, this is from back in the 50s and 60s, somebody said, okay, after so many cell replications, your telomeres, you lose that bright green part and you're dead. You can only live to be 80 to 85 years old. That's the maximum humans can live. They were wrong. This is old stuff. They did it all based on the telomeres because they did it on the assumptions telomeres only get shorter turns out you can make your telomeres longer. I'll get to what this has to do with pH, but this is really cool. So this is a study from China from just a couple of years ago, because again, the technology now allows us to do this analysis and they put people on one of four diets, what I call the gorilla diet or the whole food plant-based, which ideally I got you on now. Uh, the second one was the macho diet. So Chick-fil-A, right? Or a Burger King. Um, that's, they called it the macho diet. That's actually the name in the study. Uh, the Asian study, the Asian diet, which is not healthy because the Asian diet is filled with processed oils, which are just filled with antioxidants and sugar. Look at that. It's just glowing with sugar and oil, and it's really not healthy. And this is the saddest one of them all because this is what we feed our kids in the lunch program. And they called it in the study, the high energy density. It's just loaded with sugar, fat, wheat, processed crap. So this is like the multiple choice question you all want because you know the answer. You're like, oh, it's obviously the gorilla gave the longest telomere lengths, but it's more than that. Is this really the multiple choice question you're willing to embrace right now and say, Oh, wow, I eat the macho diet. Oh, wow, I eat the Asian diet. And I kind of think that going to like Panda Express is healthy because it's Asian food and the Asians are healthy. Uh, not really, because, yeah. All right, you want to eat like the gorillas. So you always heard this, nature or nurture, which is it? And then so people are like, oh, I believe it's nature. Oh, I believe it, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. So nature is that your DNA sequence is who you are. It's not. It's only 2% of you, and you can change it. Anyway, so the standard American diet, it's going to shorten your telomeres. Look at the Happy Meal. Is it really a Happy Meal? It should be called the Sad Meal. Anyway, this is a study from the Proceedings National Academy of Science. And the sad part is our words affect us that they're looking at telomere shortening. So we'll humor them for a moment because it turns out you can go the other way and they found telomeres shrink every year by about 15 base pairs. It's just part of what happens, that's normal. The number one shrinker was diet because they only looked at diet and it was processed meat, saturated fat and the sugary drinks as well as smoking anything you're smoking any way you're smoking, whether it's vaping or doing the traditional cigarette or whatever. Yeah. Or you can just go and lick plutonium. Class one carcinogen. You know how hard it is to become a class one carcinogen? Almost impossible because it means there's no doubt it's guaranteed you'll get cancer. There's two that I know of. Um, I'm pretty sure cigarettes are class two, but they might be class one. Uh, in case you don't know, processed meat, meaning bacon, uh, the lunch meats, they're a class one carcinogen. It's guaranteed. Why aren't they labeled? Makes you wonder. And the other thing is plutonium. So 
yeah, go to Hanford. Just you can't actually. Um, so it might be cute. It should say cute, but you're going to get cancer. Anyway, smoking all these things silenced genes, meaning it turned things off that we don't necessarily want to. And it made the proteins that would normally like burn our fat, it actually turned them off. So you can't use the fat. So this, oh, this is not good. And it's shrinking our telomeres. The problem with this study is they don't address the fact that we can lengthen our telomeres. And so we're going to make a huge jump here, interest of time and your teachers. Um, the thing that actually had the greatest impact on telomeres, not from this study, a different study, in lengthening telomeres, the biggest impact on making them longer, because it turns out you can, so your choices in your diet, those antioxidants, are not only helping with free radicals, but they're helping to keep your telomere length there. The biggest change of all was service, not diet. It was being of service to others. That's a picture of my Joey. This is a study from China, again, comparing a group of people in the US and in China for three months. These people were depressed, right? Oh, I feel so... Oh, I just can't find happiness. So I said, for the next three months, we want you to do what makes you feel good. And after three months, the people in China were all better. But there wasn't drugs and it wasn't diet. So what was it? Well, the Americans, they did what made them feel better. They went shopping. Amazon, holy moly. Uh, they exercised. They did self-help. They did affirmations. And they were still where they started. In China... They did what made other people feel healthy, healthy, happy, and healthy. Ponder that. Uh, this is a picture I also got this week beside the mandala pictures. Uh, this is Zach, who was in my class five, six, seven years ago, and we've kept in touch and are good friends now. And he just started his first day in medical school, and he sent me a gratitude note. Um, Zach, why I wanted this picture in this lab, Zach always was smiling. Never saw him without a smile, always smiling. He's the doctor I would want because um, he's just always smiling. There is more to it. So besides, he's now dedicated himself to a life of service. There's more to Zach because I know his full story. And this is part of this lab and why that picture coming this week was perfect. So I pondered this pH also change the length of your telomeres. So all of this, right, is connected. Um, do telomeres change your pH? Doesn't matter which came first. And then I pondered, does service change your pH? And so we got one more piece we have to add to this for this lab. So some fairy dust. And we do know that breathing affects your pH. So we've talked about metabolic acidosis alkalosis. That is the food we eat but your breathing affects your pH and that is respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. So that is a picture from on top of Mount Everest. Uh, so that is Pimba who is a real Sherpa. That's where my name comes from. And he's there. He's at an extremely high altitude. He's happier there. And this is on top of Mount Everest. He actually is the only human who survived. He slept just below the top. He was with somebody who was sick. He never left them behind. Um, anyway, and then he had to come down. But when you're up that high and you're breathing and the oxygen is only at 25%, you're taking, you're breathing more, right? He's, he's having to take more breaths. And so he actually sent himself into alkalosis, um, ended up passing out later when he went down in elevation. But so basically he's trying to breathe in more oxygen, but every time he's trying to take more breath, he's bringing out more CO2. So decreasing the CO2, according to Les Chatelier's, you should be able to look at this, lower CO2. So it's going to shift it towards the CO2 that decreases the hydrogen and raises your pH. So we all want to breathe like we're on top of Mount Everest, but not really. We want to breathe slower and deeper, but not to the point where we get so extreme that we send it a little bit too far. 
what almost everybody does is sends themselves into respiratory acidosis. So acidosis is because we're not breathing correctly. And it is respiratory acidosis is a buildup of CO2. So if the CO2 builds up on the left side of the equilibrium, it's going to shift forward and increase the hydrogen. So by having more CO2, you're not breathing out enough CO2. You're, you're breathing, but you're not taking deep enough breaths. And so the CO2 is just staying there in your blood and that increases your hydrogen, which decreases your pH. So that's what this picture shows. Higher CO2 levels actually decreases your pH. And they're showing you again correctly below that 7.35. So you're still alive, you're functioning, but your pH is in the zone where disease happens. So what causes that? Smoking, any kind of smoking. So that's a picture of your lungs. And at the top is you know, somebody's artistic drawing of normal, which is a bunch of grapes. So you have this exchange of oxygen uh, wrapped right with all the blood vessels, except when you have damaged, all those grapes become one ginormous grapefruit and you can't exchange gases correctly. You have less surface area. And so the gas exchange can't happen and the CO2 builds up. If you don't know somebody with emphysema, you're very fortunate and you're also not paying attention. I've known many people have gone through and their function of their, their lungs end up at 20, 30% and they just can't breathe. And it's, it's not, it's not pleasant. Um, anyway, so the CO2 is building up because they can't get rid of it. Um, for most people, it is stress that we're in this perpetual place of stress. Um, whether it's the words we use, our belief system, um, the fear that people think that we're in these days. Uh, and so if you're stressed, you're breathing very shallow, the CO2 is built up, you're in a state of respiratory acidosis, as well as metabolic acidosis, which means your pH, although you're not in a coma, you're in an unhealthy place. So clean up your diet and we're gonna clean up our breathing now. So stay with me for a few more minutes is cortisol. This is known as the stress hormone. So where it comes from is you see the tiger and the tiger makes our body is designed. So a tiger jumps out at you ah, and you are either gonna have to fight that tiger or you're gonna to have to run. Now, I know in psychology classes, they've added other dimensions to this, but this truly is what you do. You're either gonna fight or run. And to do that, you release adrenaline. And adrenaline makes your body, pumps more blood so you can run or fight. It also tells your liver to release all of the glycogen. And the glycogen breaks down into glucose and the glucose goes to your muscles and your muscles have energy and it can fight or run or freeze or whatever you have to do and you only have a two hour supply. Your body knows you only have a two hour supply of glucose stored in your liver. And so at the same moment that the epinephrine is released, when you see that tiger, your adrenal, the adrenals release adrenaline, they also release cortisol and that's that molecule. And the cortisol travels, it's hydrophobic, it's mostly carbons, only the red oxygens like water. So hydrophobic means nonpolar. So it has to have a little boat and that little boat takes it to the liver. You're right next to each other. And it enters the liver, enters the cells and goes to your DNA. And it binds the DNA and it changes how your DNA is expressed. And it says, hey, we are in need of more glucose because it's assuming that you're running. It's assuming that you're using up all of the supply and it says, you better start making more. And, and the thing is, is once this starts, you don't go backwards. It finishes its job. It's not a two-way reaction. It's a one-way. And so to make more glucose, because your, your body has been trained that you're running from the tiger, that you're running out of it, we, we need a new supply. So it starts breaking down your muscles and it breaks down your muscles, the amino acids get changed into glucose, and there's an issue. So the stress happens, 
the body releases adrenaline, you deal with it, it releases cortisol, but it wasn't really stress. There was nothing to run from. It was all in your brain. Whether you can figure out which gingerbread man is you. Could be anger, could be annoyance, it could just be fear. So it's called gluconeogenesis. So genesis means to make, neo means new, and gluco means glucose. So you're making new glucose in your liver by breaking down the proteins. So your buttocks, those muscles, your legs, they're not that far from your liver. It's breaking down those muscles. And oh, it could just be you're upset at your computer. That's going to send you into this. And it turns out you don't need that glucose because you've just been sitting staring and annoyed at your computer for the past two hours. But your body did this. It started doing it. And so you just store it. It takes all that glucose that you just made by breaking down your muscles and stores it as fat. Lipo means fat. And it stores it as fat around your liver because your liver is doing all this. Be nice to your liver. Your liver doesn't like sugar. It likes healthy food. It likes whole food, plant-based, because it's filled with antioxidants. You know, staying up late at night, all of this, it turns off your thyroid, turns off your liver detox. That busy, busy, busy schedule running around the clock decreases our immune response. Wait, all we had to do is eat healthy this past year and calm down, and our immune system would have worked? Yeah. So it does this whole thing, blah, 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 that I could go into, but basically you end up, your melatonin is off. Staring at a computer screen, staring at your phone screen, looking at Facebook, it messes up your melatonin and then you don't sleep. And so we basically wanna shift the pathway. You need sunlight and you need to exercise moderately. You need to smile and laugh. I gotta meet the Dalai Lama, amazing. Always smiling, all the Tibetan monks are. You need to sleep with joy. Go get a pet if you don't have one. You need to learn to pray in a way that brings peace to yourself. And that's gratitude. That's all prayer means is expressing gratitude to yourself, to others, to the planet. And you need to continue to eat healthy. All right, so we shift the pathway. This is the piece. This is key to everything. We are the only species. We're special, right? 98% of our DNA is a symphony. And we're the only ones that can turn that whole stress response on in our adrenals with a thought. Every other species has to see a stress, has to have an actual thing happen we create it in our mind. We play these scenarios. You all know you are this. Where a meditation teacher said, we are the worst directors of movies in the world because nobody else ever comes and watches the movie that is going on perpetually in our brain. We're like, what if, what if, what if, oh, and we create these things. So instead of creating horror movies, let's create a love movie. Let's create a comedy. And that's what this lab is about. That's what my brain looks like. It is just blossoming because I choose love. So this is an amazing book, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, several of you have asked me for books and stuff and I say, look up Joe Dispenza. Other one is Bruce Lipton. Um, and um, sorry, I can't remember the one I'm reading right now, but uh, this is a book I have, is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And this is where I got a lot of this, this slide from is um, he talks about you have a choice. So survival is fear, stress, you're in the cortisol, epinephrine, adrenaline place. Or you can be in creation, which is oxytocin, um, endorphins. Uh, so your body, this is the key, if you haven't gotten it from all of your chemistry classes, we are quantum beings. So the physicality of cortisol being released or the oxytocin love being released, that is the manifestation of your thoughts. The thoughts come first and that is what is releasing the physicality, the matter. So for the next seven days and ideally the rest of the term, you're entering a stress-free zone. If I could do this the first day, I would, but you have to get to know me and you had to clean up your diets first. So there's your fairy godmothers some extra fairy dust to get us there. And 
We're all here cheering for you. Three parts to the lab again, because it's Chem 223. You are all going to meditate for the next seven days, ideally for the rest of your life. So that's me in Montana overlooking Yellowstone National Park. I'm doing Qigong. I do different forms of meditation throughout the day. Uh, how you meditate, so it's, I'm asking 12 minutes a day. You could do it outside if you've learned how, if you want to learn Qigong, talk to me, I will teach it to you. Um, and that is really what I would like to be doing. Um, you can sit, you can lay down, you can go for a meditative walk. Um, you can choose how you want to do it. You can pray. So if you're somebody who would like to read a psalm every day and then just sit outside in nature and meditate on that. The key of the gnome, the gnome has it. He's smiling. Meditation involves joy. It's not grumpiness, staring at a candle. Oh my gosh, when's this going to be over? It's not, when's the timer going to ring? You're just sitting and breathing. Every time your mind starts to wander, come back and breathe. Focus, count. Really, the counting works. Count by the periodic table and count in for four breaths. If you can, hold for four, four counts. Sorry, not four breaths. So count in for four, hold, and then breathe out very slow. Pause and breathe in and smile. And every time you're not smiling, giggle and forgive yourself. Place your hand on your heart. Send love out. Breathe in light. Breathe out love. Breathe in love. Breathe out light. You can ponder different people in your life that you want to send love to. I do this every morning to each one of you. Why you have to turn your Zoom cameras on. Because this is really hard for me to do. Because some of you, I don't know who you are. Turn on your camera. All right. So you're all going to meditate for 12 minutes a day. It's not gonna work initially. Most people, if you already have a practice, keep doing it, add something to it. You could go for a walk. You could go for a walk, not with your phone, not for exercise. You're going for a very slow walk. You're noticing the flowers. You're noticing the moth. You're noticing that's flying around, butterflies and bees and you're smiling, you can nod to people and smile and say, have a great day. And then send them love. And when the garbage man goes by, wave to them and say, thank you. I'm so grateful I have service. Say thank you to the, to the birds, to the trees that are providing you with oxygen. Here you go, try something different each day. The first day, the second day, usually it doesn't go so well, but by the fourth or fifth day, something usually changes. You can do it laying down. You can take the, when you go to bed at night, you can say, okay, turning off your phone and just place your hand on your heart and just breathe and think about how your day was. Sending peace and joy to your day and just breathing slower and slower until you fall asleep. I do that, it takes me about less than a breath to fall asleep. People have said it's unbelievably amazing how fast I can fall asleep. All right. So second part of the lab, I this is the title, acidosis gigolosis or bufferosis gigolosis. Um, you have a choice for part two. We'll go through the choices. You can giggle until you wiggle and jiggle. So this is Joey. Uh, and this is playing at my mom's house, Uno. We play when I'm at my mom's for a month, twice a year. We just play Uno every night. And we are all like laughing where we can't breathe. Um, and so that's what the giggling is. It's not like huh? you and, and yeah, whatever makes you giggle. Just be silly. I've told a story about right? This doesn't involve exercise, but um, people are like, I want to go for a bike ride with you. I, I bike slow because I went one time on a bike ride. It was the first sunny day and every, I'm out there biking really hard. I only saw one happy person on a bike and it was a guy who was biking like the frog while his feet were on the pedal. And he was just out biking to sm smell the roses. And that's how I bike now. And people are always passing me. And then they kind of look at me like, what's wrong with her? nothing's wrong anymore. 
I'm there to be part of the experience. Go on a picnic. Make somebody else smile. Our animals are the best at that. Another choice could be gratitude. So it, it, the write-ups there saying grace, expressing gratitude to the cook, giving a hug. Uh, that's my mom expressing gratitude by baking something special for some. That's not baking. That's a raw uh, chocolate raspberry birthday cake I made her. Uh, or no, that must be, I don't know, that would be last summer. Um, the other choice, and, and you're going to write like notes of gratitude to people. It's, it's written up in the lab. Um, the other choice is you could be of service. So it could be doing the dishes. It could be, this is, I get to teach a kid's class. And that is uh, Dr. Sean. He's in medical school now in the Caribbean, but he helped me for like five years. Um, and so this is in the chemistry labs. So we we're making fractals. And so it could be going and just doing something with the neighbor kids drawing on the road for 15 minutes a day, just doing it to do it. All right. Um, or if you're like, mm, you can do a diet modification. You can add another dimension to your diet. So it's called G-bombs. It's in the write-up. So within the day, you have to eat from these seven categories. You can do it in one meal. It makes a great salad. So greens, beans, onions, mushrooms. It's interesting because I used to not like mushrooms. Last year, it's like, I don't like mushrooms. You still have to have it in your diet for this week. I love mushrooms now. Um, so part three of the lab, again, a choice. So you're all going to meditate. You're going to do one of those other things for seven days. And then this is just a one-time deal that you either are going to try some new kind of spice. Um, so like turmeric or something, make a recipe, take a picture of it. And then you're going to find a scientific study about turmeric. Or you can go for art, could be music. It could be poetry about broccoli, uh, or it could be art. This is one that somebody did last term. And you're also going to find the scientific study then about it. Uh, or you can choose to make a healthy molecule, like with olives and grapes. So the carbons can be olives. And you're going to make the healthy. It's going to be an acid or base. So this is a base because it's got the nitrogens. This is what's in chocolate. And then you find a study about the obromi and chocolate and why it's so healthy for you. And so again, you have a choice. You're all going to meditate, but then you have a choice. The previous slide, whoops, let's just go. You can giggle, you can, you can be grateful, you can do G-bombs, you can be of service. That's part two of the lab. You can also involve a friend for a bonus. You can decide to do two of these. So again, you're all going to meditate. You're going to do one of these, and then you do that for a bonus point. Why not? Let's all shift our pH. Let's all make longer telomeres. Let's all realize how blessed and beautiful you all are. So namaste. I'll see you soon.